Welcome. Welcome to this last um, Hot Topics lecture this summer. And uh, thank you for everyone who has been attending throughout the summer. Um, this is a uh, uh, one credit CLE um, lecture. So there's a, a sign-in sheet in the back if you would like to get CLE credits. Um, this is a brown bag event, so feel free to eat your lunch during the lecture. Um, and there'll be a, a Q&A after the lecture. Uh, my name is Sue Chip Lam. I'm the uh, director of the U.S. China Partner. Yeah. Yeah. Correct myself. <laughs> U.S. Asia Partnerships for Environmental Law. We just recently changed our name, and even I cannot even remember that. Um, so I'm actually really honored to be uh, introducing Professor Zhao, uh, Hui Yu Zhao. She is an associate professor of law um, at the uh, Shanghai Jiao Tong University. Uh, Professor Zhao's area of expertise include environmental law, energy law, natural resource law, and the Chinese judicial system and reform. Um, she has published many textbooks, including legal um, studies on ecosystem management and environmental resources law. She has also uh, written numerous uh, journals and news articles on the topics. And from 2012 and 2013, uh, she served as a visiting scholar at the University of Maryland School of Law. Uh, she earned her uh, bachelor's in engineering degree from Henan Institute of Finance and Economics, her L um, and her LLM degree in economic law from Zhengzhou, Zhengzhou University, and her doctor of law in environmental law from Wuhan University. Today, she is presenting on a very interesting topic, as she can see from her title of the topic. It's Still a paper tiger, China's environmental courts in the wake of 2014 amendments to the Chinese basic environmental law. So without further ado, please welcome Professor Jack. Uh, thank you, Professor Sun Yu. Uh, thank you, every uh, professor. Um, um, since I fly from um, a very far away, a long distance from China, so maybe my English is not so perfect, but I really want to have a very honored opportunity to stand here and want to share some about China's very exciting development about environmental <laughs> judiciary recently, two or three years, in just during uh, recent two or three years. So um, when I uh, decided to uh, talk about China's environmental public litigation at that time, maybe six months ago, um, it's, I, I use the name Paper Tiger because I, I found still a very big uh, a problem or shortcoming after our new amendment about China's basic environmental pro uh, protection law. Uh, when they regulated, first time regulated uh, public interest litigation in China. Um, but even after, uh, during that six months, that new development still happened in China, in China's reform, judicial reform, or some of the, um, the new uh, re regulation. So, but I still don't want to change the paper tiger or this kind of uh, expression because I, I'm just looking, uh, observing the new development or effects about China's uh, environmental, uh, environmental uh, judicial reform. So um, first, uh, um, I just uh, want to uh, uh, brief introduce uh, China's uh, public interest litigation into three parts. First, uh, maybe some uh, new developments and the basic um, concept about China's, what's the meaning of China's public interest litigation, especially on uh, environmental issues. Second, I, I want to give some background about recent years, China's environmental issues and China's environmental uh, uh, problem and its solutions. The third part, I mean, uh, analysis, analysis that China, uh, how to practice the new amendment on public uh, interest litigation. Um, in our concept, maybe the public uh, interest litigation just means uh, some people or some system must uh, safeguard the public interest. 
So um, it's a, a very specific way, not the only a victim directly uh, sue the polluters or some um, related uh, agencies, maybe it's by uh, other people. So three characters about China's public interest litigation. Uh, first, uh, the plaintiff has no direct stake. Second, uh, the damage could be both uh, real damage that has happened or some potential damage will uh, happen uh, quite soon or in the future. Third, um, the uh, target about the public, partic uh, public uh, interest litigation could be two kinds. The first uh, is what we call the civil, uh, uh, the civil actors who cause the damage. Uh, the second, uh, some agencies or officials, they just uh, uh, wrong doing something. So uh, that's a, um, a mean uh, basic concept or, and character about China's uh, public interest litigation. Um, why in recent years uh, we uh, think a lot about public uh, uh, interest litigation in China because the very uh, heavy challenges that happened in China's uh, environmental issues. First, more and more damage caused from pollution and uh, accidents, environmental accidents, uh, like Songhua River, like um, every year, uh, many very significant uh, uh, big environmental uh, incidents. Uh, so from China's uh, the newest uh, um, environmental bulletin, uh, more than half of Chinese underground water are in very poor quality and uh, according to China's, uh, because China's uh, smog recently years are very famous, um, uh, especially from capital Beijing or even some big cities or even sometimes uh, regional haze or smog happened in China um, here and there. So according to China's new uh, air quality, among 161 cities, only 16 cities can get the standard. And the others, uh, 145 cities could not um, meet the standard, China's new higher quality standard. But that new college, uh, co uh, co uh, higher uh, quality standard is a little bit stringent than the older one, it's higher level. But um, it's not very high, but it's still um, it's not a very good result. And China's uh, river and the mean water uh, just uh, classified to six uh, kit logs. Uh, the grid one is the best, but worse than grid five is the worst. So that's a, a mean percentage about China's uh, water uh, quality. So uh, the second problem and a big challenge is uh, a pollution damage humans' health. So uh, in China, uh, our MEP, Ministry of Environmental Protection, they um, admit first time in 2013, they first time admit that in China we existed a lot of uh, cancer villages. Just uh, that's a map of this kind of uh, uh, cancer villages um, and uh, they have some new trend and expanded to maybe west of China. And uh, so, and you can imagine the Beijing haze or this kind of uh, uh, air pollution still can cause a lot of uh, uh, trauma or um, lung cancers. Those are new uh, challenges in China. So um, we can see with that um, serious problems, the rapid uh, increase about China's pollution complaints uh, just uh, have a very rapid growth. So from 2012, uh, 2010, uh, uh, sorry, 2002, and until your uh, recent years, maybe until this year, every year the complaints, the petition about environmental damage uh, just increased 30 percent. And the recent years, uh, as uh, for example, uh, until this year or last year, the number of complaints um, about the people from the people 
uh, get to 74,000 per year. So that's a data about the increase about China's uh, environmental complex. So uh, with this kind of uh, uh, pollution accidents, Chinese people's uh, uh, NIMBY movements and the protests still increase the rapidly. So many different uh, um, uh, types of uh, uh, environmental protests just uh, happened during the whole, uh, 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 around the whole China. So um, here is uh, some um, characters. First, um, about the movement. You know, in China, the uh, mass movement and protests are not so easy to, you know, to process, proceed. But because the environmental damage was so serious, so people still try to find their way to go to the street, to went to the street, to want to uh, um, have their own voice. And uh, since 1996, um, every year, the people's uh, protests about environment increase almost the same uh, percentage, 29%. And mostly they focused on some key industries or enterprises. Like in China, a kind of a chemical uh, factory are very uh, famous in China. It's a PX uh, factory uh, production. All the PX project in China almost uh, all against the, by the local citizens. So it's uh, this kind of mass protest became our gridlock and very difficult to be solved. Even local government or even central government, they find many solutions and want to uh, calm down the people, but something uh, could not um, solve um, finally. So after uh, these very serious challenges and the facts, so our central government and the new generation of the leaders they just made their attitude that we must do something to solve the China's environmental problem. So uh, Xi Jinping, uh, our chairman, in 2013, he, uh, in one important uh, community parties uh, meeting, he said we must uh, uh, fulfill China's environmental law and uh, to establish the uh, ecological civilization. And, uh, um, if the local officials who uh, did, the wrong, did the wrong thing, maybe the accountability will follow him for his whole life. That means after your retirement, maybe you could be uh, still um, checked by this kind of responsibility. And our premier, Li Keqiang, in 2014, and he said, we declare our war to environmental pollution. So um, that's uh, under that big uh, background, China um, made the new amendment of the environmental protection law in 2014. And this law will be, uh, at that time, will, will be effective uh, from January 1st, uh, 2015. So this new amendment law uh, with uh, 70 articles. So, but it's the uh, first time's amendment from, two, uh, two, from 1989, after 20 years later, the first time uh, amended the law. So uh, in China now, we call it the most stringent environmental law in China's history. So that's a, a whole picture about the background. So think about uh, what's uh, regulated inside the uh, new amendment of the basic pro pro uh, environmental protection law, Article 53. They said citizens, legal persons, and other organizations shall have the right to obtain environmental information, participate, and supervise the activity of some uh, people, uh, some agencies. So, uh, but that's a very general principle. Um, but in Article 80, uh, 58, they specified the, uh, the real regulation on China's public interest litigation. But the standing is very narrow. 
this standing only can focus on China's uh, social organizations, mainly they are NGOs, no others. Um, but in China, we have some other resources before this regulation. I will introduce that later. But the requirement, the first, uh, their registration at the civil fire under the civil fire department of people's government or about some uh, the city's level. It could not be very lower level civil fire department's uh, registration. Second, they must have the practice for five conse consecutive years or more. So that's uh, the main requirement about the standing of the public interest litigation um, in China. Um, so here, I just want to briefly uh, 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 just uh, give some thinking about that two things. Uh, why we do think uh, we do need a public interest litigation in China because we have our common, uh, I, I mean, ordinary civil law that the victims, uh, 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 victim teams can sue the polluter uh, uh, instead of uh, another, uh, the third part to party to, to sue the polluter as a public interest litigation. The second. What factors do we need to conduct a public interest litigation? Um, here is our, another uh, series of data to show that after so many years, China's economic rapid growth, but uh, very poor environmental protection status, uh, then uh, you can see uh, you can see it's a little bit uh, uh, older uh, uh, data, but can show in recent years uh, how miserable that China's judicial power played their role on um, China's environmental uh, disputes or conflicts. So in, uh, from 2006 to 2011, that's during our the 11 five-year plan term, more than uh, 200,000 pieces of environmental petitions or complaints. So uh, among them, uh, several get the, uh, the administrative, uh, during the five years, they get uh, administrative reviews. It's more than 260, uh, six, uh, sorry, 2,600 pieces. But uh, for the administrative, because administrative review is China's uh, uh, administrative procedure. It's not belongs to the judicial procedure. Um, the real uh, administrative litigation, just uh, uh, less than 100 cases uh, among the five years. The more funny thing is, during the five years, we only have 30 cases for environmental cr criminal law. So uh, that means the five Years during the five years, only we have six cases, environmental criminal cases, uh, in our country. That must be very uh, low uh, 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 data uh, compared to China's so serious environmental pollution situation. So here, our head of our MEP said less than one percent disputes just the. Uh, uh, so try to find the solution uh, to the judicial by the judicial channel or by the judicial power. So many, many petitions, yet first maybe they went to the streets, second maybe they just want to find the, all the related EPV or MEP or related other local governments try to help them to solve the problem. They, they uh, peti peti the petition uh, year after year, day after day, maybe they could not find any reasonable solution. So that's uh, um, uh, another uh, way to show why we do need public uh, interest litigation in China. Um, and some other reasons like you know, environmental lawsuits in any country could not be very easy or very simple uh, uh, lawsuits. Uh, here, I give you an example. In your country, you have your <coughs> citizen suits. Why? Because if the only victims, direct uh, victims, sue the polluters, it could not be so easy. Time 
consuming money, consuming so many diff difficult or complicated uh, evidence, professional uh, evidence, uh, it's too hard for the common people. So citizen suits are just uh, very important even in your country. So another reason I just uh, back here, no effective class action in China and uh, the victims, maybe sometimes it's not only one or two, it's a, a one village, a group of people, but they are still too weak. Like what I said, they do not have enough support, do not, enough money, enough professional knowledge to uh, have this kind of uh, uh, direct litigation, civil litigation. So um, we need public interest litigation in China. So if we need that, the next question is, what factors do we need to conduct a public uh, interest litigation? For the first question, do we need that? No problem. All the experts and common people, they, they think uh, we need. But the second question is more complicated uh, in China. Uh, the first question is, who can be the plaintiff? Second, do we have the court to accept that? Yes, uh, of course, uh, the ordinary uh, courts, maybe they can accept uh, this kind of case, but the problem is environmental lawsuits are so complicated, and a lot of environmental cases have been rejected by courts, by different levels of the courts. Why? Some are political reasons. They said, we cannot handle it because that's related to some local economic development or you know, GDP problem. So we could not do that. We could not accept that. Some, some, some judges think, oh, so many uh, people want to, to talk about this case, what we call the sensitive case. They don't want to uh, accept that. And for some judge, environmental lawsuits already, you know, technology are not so easy for them. So that's a, a, the court's problem. Um, the third problem is, um, uh, what I just said, do we have enough preparation for environmental litigation? Like uh, environmental litigation rules, but rules. But for that, we have already issued two Supreme Court interpretations. So the courts and the, the rules are easily to be solved. Uh, during, uh, from this year, January 2015, our Supreme Court issued uh, independent and specific civil public interest litigation, uh, so-called uh, judicial in interpretation. In China, judicial interpretation is not the, the, the formal resources of law, but it's a sort of similar, it's more practical because it's issued by our Supreme Court. All the courts must follow this kind of rules. So it's a first uh, uh, specific public interest litigation uh, rules just issued by our Supreme Court. Uh, it's a 35 articles inside these judicial interpretations. Mostly, they just are trying to facilitate the public interest litigation. Um, and they uh, give some more <coughs> specific uh, 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 regulations such as transboundary litigation, combined with some public interest litigation with a private litigation. Uh, suppose maybe uh, some people, they have some private litigation so public can follow, or some public uh, litigation and the private uh, litigation can, can follow. So that's uh, easier for so hard <coughs> environmental lawsuits. Sir, reduce the plaintiff's litigation costs. It's very important because, you know, the, the time and the, what I said, the money consuming environmental lawsuits, if you lower their costs, it would be much higher for, for uh, some uh, still a more specific uh, standing uh, uh, regulations uh, about China's NGO. After that, um, just uh, um, in 2015, uh, June 2015, it's very close uh, to um, nowadays. 
uh, the, uh, our, our Supreme Court issued another judicial interpretation that have 19 articles. Inside, they extended uh, eight um, contents I just want to help to practice public interest litigations, such as what the, the scope of the uh, application and the principle of the liability and the, uh, the uh, not only one uh, person, uh, a, a number of persons, their uh, respectively or a commonly responsibility, the third party statutes in the litigation and their responsibility, the principle of distribution of the burden of proof, and some uh, identification inspection and uh, experts' opinion and, stuff, and other relevant evidence, and how to uh, represent. Uh, uh, preserve, preserve the evidence and the consequence of the tort uh, liability. So the name is environmental tort judicial interpretation. That's uh, another one that much related to China's environmental public interest litigation. So here we solved the problem about uh, the new rules about environmental litigation. Uh, here uh, I just want to uh, think about more about the plentiful and most uh, tricky part in China. Once we have the uh, different resources about the plaintiffs, because we uh, before we have the new amendment, we do not have the we did not have the formal uh, type of public interest litigation. But uh, in China, NGOs and some agencies and public uh, prosecutors and individuals, they all try to bring some brought some lawsuits to our courts. Some, most of them may be rejected, being rejected, but some of them are accepted by our courts. So until now, I have some data. Uh, in China's uh, recent years, maybe uh, recent five years or even 10 years, not too many public, what we call the test cases, uh, uh, all gathered together, maybe com not complete uh, statistic, but uh, uh, just uh, until end of uh, 2013, uh, we have public interest litigation, I mean, on environment um, could be 54. And you can see the percentage about that. And the, the largest part just uh, raised by prosecutors. And the second part just uh, raised by China's administrative agencies. Third part raised by our NGOs and the, the black and the smallest part are raised by some individuals. So that's the original China's past cases during these year, recent years. So you can see prosecutors are more active during um, among these years. Um, and the talk about China's NGO, that's another topic, because after the new amendment, the spending just the folks on NGO, prosecutors, agencies and individuals all excluded to these standings. So only left the NGOs with some requirements. <coughs> so in China, for example, I just uh, uh, want to introduce two cases briefly, uh, just two cases about how China's NGO play their roles in environmental public litigation. Uh, this one, all China environment uh, Funded a uh, 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 federation. This is what we call ACEF. Uh, usually we call that. It's a uh, uh, maybe only one very strong uh, professional environmental NGO in China because its background is China's MEP, Ministry of Environmental Protection. They established a government NGO try to solve some problem um, about uh, environmental issues. So before the new amendment, they tried some public interest litigation, which sounds successfully, but these are problems like, you know, um, uh, here is a, a paper, uh, paper mail uh, in, in Guizhou province, and in that place, they have some professional environmental courts. So that environment courts they very uh, active, positive to accept the public interest litigation. They did not reject that kind of uh, 
uh, litigation. So that's why ACEF, a uh, such strong background of governmental NGO, can sue successfully. Here are some, you know, that's a pollution uh, picture that they discharge pollutant securely from a natural coastal cave. That's very bad manner. Uh, but you can see that's a policeman who worked for the courts. They got up so early to find, to try to find the evidence. Uh, in another way, you can see our court and the NGO, they have very close cooperation. That's a basic uh, ground about how this kind of NGOs can sue, but that's before the amendment. After the amendment, because it's only be effective from this year, January, so we even do not have one um, of years uh, uh, having decision, uh, ha I mean, new decision from the after the, the new amendment. So that's the older one. But from that, you can see the courts, their attitudes and their uh, their um, willingness could be very important to uh, to the public litigation. Another uh, case is still before the amendment, but it's very interesting because it's after we issued the, the new amendment already, but that one did not be effective, I see, from this year. Uh, but that's just after the new amendment uh, issued from April uh, 26, uh, last year. So um, here is our uh, English uh, report about that uh, case. It's a uh, uh, it's a, what we call the sky money competition. Maybe you think it's not too uh, too huge. It's only uh, 26 million RMB, but that's very huge in China. It's a it's a highest competition case in China. Um, it's a but inside uh, a very interesting detail is um, uh, which uh, I had the meeting with uh, the judge who, who trialed this uh, case and. Uh, this other uh, expert is of uh, uh, another NGO named uh, Nature of uh, Friendship of uh, the Friend of Nature. So they talk about this case because one interesting detail is uh, they uh, in uh, who sued these polluters, uh, six polluters, the Taizhou City Environmental Protection Association. That's the name of our Taizhou local NGO. But the interesting thing is the foreign media found an interesting phenomenon because uh, the head of that NGO, his name is the same as a, of a local EPB's head. So um, they just uh, question, the, oh, the NGO, the head of your NGO can be the head of your agency, and you know, they're the same function. They are all major in environmental protection. So, um, but anyway, uh, we talked to the judges. The judge said uh, we do not review their qualification certification. Um, another agency, uh, you know, that civil uh, fire department is in charge of that. But the back, the background story is, you know, uh, they want to 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 do something about the pollution. So they first uh, the EP, local EPB just established uh, our NGO quickly, so sue the polluters. Uh, anyway, it's uh, um, some stories, but the, the, from these stu stories, we can say Chinese judicial independent are not so, um, so completely. So uh, at present, the public interest litigation uh, mostly uh, need to, um, to rely on some um, governmental or uh, courts, their attitudes or their performance. Um, but after the amendment of the new law, uh, we uh, need to rethink about China's NGO. Do they have the enough uh, capacity to take the responsibility as the only collective about China's environmental public litigation? So here is China's uh, general situation about environmental NGOs. They have the formal, any formal, because they have the re uh, uh, restriction uh, under some uh, formal, uh, you know, uh, procedures. Uh, we have uh, we have two thousand, more than two thousand environmental NGOs. But 
uh, you know, we have two requirements in the new amendment. First, you must uh, uh, beyond the city's levels. Uh, for the second, you must uh, 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 practice your environmental protection career for more than five years uh, and without any violation record. So in, uh, we have a, a maybe general uh, statistic. In China, we only have 300 NGOs can qualify this kind of uh, plaintiff standing. Um, and among the 300, less, less than half have the financial and the technical expertise maybe really can sue or can bring the public interest lawsuits. And uh, here, I, I because I probably talked with uh, the Jiangsu province, some jars in Jiangsu province and Guangdong province. They are not very small. They have 31 provinces in China, and Jiangsu and Guangdong are two big provinces in China. And they said, we only know Jiangsu have one NGO can qualify the standing. And Guangdong said the same thing. They said only one NGO uh, qualified that two standards. At the same time, you know, they must, uh, you know, they are NGOs. You cannot force them to bring some lawsuits. So they must have their own capacity and own awareness to bring the lawsuits. That's another problem. So the problem is maybe many of these uh, uh, be unwilling to feel uh, such lawsuits. Um, so that's what I said after I picked up this uh, uh, quite a problem with this uh, topic after that and uh, China have some new development of a community party made a new decision that during the uh, uh, important uh, uh, CPC's meeting uh, named the law of law pushing China's uh, promoting China's law of law that sounds very good for our environmental I mean uh, uh, legal experts so uh, here they uh, said they endured exploring the establishment of a public interest litigation system by uh, Precuritorial August. Uh, so here we have some new development. And uh, after that, uh, you know, our, our communist party, you know, they are the real uh, uh, strings can, can decide the things. So after that, the spring, Pregnant rate um, quickly uh, also raised the 13 provinces as pilots for public interest litigation reform, as including Beijing, uh, Guangdong, Jiangsu, and others. So the, 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 the testing time will be two years in the 13 provinces. Here, I just a little bit uh, uh, want to mention China's uh, spring, uh, uh, China's procurement rate organs. Uh, their special functions compare other countries. We follow original 100 years ago. Of, we follow the Japanese Japanese style about the what we call the civil law system, not your uh, common law system. We follow that system, but anyway, uh, the main uh, task are similar. Uh, first, the criminal <coughs> prosecution. Second, in China, it's a little bit special. We, uh, our, our prosecutors have the right to decide arrest or not arrest people, but who enforces that is the policeman. But the policemen do not have the independent authority, and the prosecutors have. But for the civil suits, I mean, more than 100 years ago, uh, we, if we followed the Japanese, uh, I mean, or German system, that uh, in that system, the prosecutors have some direct right about the civil litigation, but now we only have the legal supervision over trials of uh, civil uh, suits by the people's courts. So, just means you are not plaintiff; you are just a uh, supervision. Uh, I once was in, uh, I, yeah, uh, my one background is a uh, 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 deputy chief uh, prosecutor in Shanghai, Minhang District. So uh, this legal provision department in our particular rate, I even in charge of that this department. I know that department is really useless because 
Um, how can you decide that the, the, the court, they made a good decision or bad decision? It's really hard, you know, it's just an outside. It cannot, it's, it's not, it's a very strange uh, function, just the only existed in China because many years ago we followed the uh, uh, Soviet uh, Union's uh, experience uh, and established that legal supervision function, but now only China have this legal supervision function that supervise the judges and policemen at the same time. No other country have this kind of functions in the world. Even uh, Russia uh, abandoned this function after 1989. So here is your country's Department of Justice. Uh, from that we can see you have this kind of the branch and uh, environmental tort litigation section. Uh, that's very uh, interesting. Uh, that from that uh, we can see. Oh, sorry. That uh, you have a civil di division in your DOJ system, and inside that you have some civil litigation and uh, sort of uh, functions. What I mentioned, China do not now uh, do not have this now. Uh, here is uh, your new. Um, uh, head of the, that division, another division, Environmental and Natural Resources Division of your DOG, uh, John Cruden, he once said, we have the Department of Justice that are admitted to giving voice to those who have been voided, vo vo voiceless. I think that's a very interesting uh, expression to uh, China some situation because I once worked as a prosecutor. I know that we need some civil function, real civil function, uh, to stand by some uh, voiceless or weak part. Maybe that's environment. Maybe that's some very weak uh, common uh, villagers, farmers, something like that. Some persons like that. So you are environmental. Uh, we talked about with uh, our, our professor, not professor, uh, official who worked uh, in uh, this summer program this year in uh, Vermont Law School, uh, Andrew. Uh, Andrew, <laughs> yeah, we talked. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We talked with him. He said because he worked in this division of the DOJ, and he said in this division they have 600 people, and 120 just uh, folks are civil affair, and the rest of them uh, folks are criminal. Litigation. So it's a very good example because I argued in our country for many years when I was a prosecutor, I said we should accept that uh, directors, uh, I mean civil litigation instead of just the supervision function to help the environment and help the weak people. So, but it sounds not quite uh, be effective because at that time our Supreme Court just uh, secretly during our inter meetings, they said we don't want that function, civil public litigation uh, function, because you must assume maybe the government, maybe the big companies. That's trouble. <laughs> That's troublesome. <laughs> they are very, you know, they are very sneaky. They, they know that not not easy. So yeah. So they only focus on the criminal cases. So uh, here. Um, Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, these are the Environmental and Natural Resources Division. That's their main functions. I mean, uh, including that 120 people who work in that division to uh, focus on the civil litigation. Um, we talked about this thing uh, many years ago. Uh, uh, I was very lucky. I, in, when I was in Shanghai, I accepted uh, two times of your formal uh, general counsel of your EPA, and one time you were head of EPA, Gina McCarthy. And uh, 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 Scott Fulton, we were very interested uh, his formal uh, uh, general counsel of your EPA. Now he uh, um, uh, moved to our environmental uh, law firm, but maybe quite soon to be a, a president of your U.S. Environmental Law Institute. Um, uh, we talk about, uh, because at that time I was a prosecutor and we talked a lot about that because he said even in, you, the, in the United States, most uh, a kind of sort of a public interest litigation was not, were not uh, brought by 
our NGO, although our NGO are much powerful than your country's NGO. Why? Because they just want to focus on some influential or maybe uh, when the law just uh, came out, they focus on some very enlightening and uh, exciting cases. But most of the others, he gave me a percentage, it's very <coughs> impressive. 70% of the sort of what I said, the public uh, litigation, interest of litigation, just uh, still raised by, by your Department of Justice. Because once he was work, uh, worked uh, in the Department of Justice, then he became the uh, general counsel of, 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 of your, your EPA. So, yeah, so his work, uh, his words really confirmed that in China, I think we need that function. A little bit, a, a little bit uh, review of, of, of that. In China, we have our, uh, uh, um, that's our spring uh, preparatory, and we have, have our organization law, I mean, prosecutors at uh, organization law in 1954. But uh, unfortunately, uh, during China's Cultural Revolution, uh, almost uh, more than 10 years, our courts and the prosecutors, the whole judicial system just uh, smashed uh, down because, you know, something, you know, um, other things uh, are of no more. So then uh, they rebuilt the, a prosecutor uh, organs from 1978, but in their new amendment of that organization of our procuratorate law in 2000, uh, sorry, sorry, 1987, they totally just uh, removed what I said, the civil litigation function. But in that one, the older one, they followed what we call the civil law system. All these kind of uh, countries, they have some functions on um, a civil litigation. But now, unfortunately, after we rebuilt this prosecutor organs, they moved that function. So in China now, we only can focus on criminal cases, I mean, our uh, procuratorate. So my conclusion is, uh, environmental public interest litigation is very <laughs> necessary in China. Um, two, we need professional uh, platform, uh, sorry, uh, plaintiffs um, about uh, public interest litigation. Sir, NGOs in China, they're very important, but for litigation, public interest litigation, maybe still not enough. Their function and a capacity are not enough for, I think, in the future, I think our prosecutors can do more uh, on environmental public lit uh, litigation, interest litigation. Thank you. And that um, uh, economic development is, is uh, a big focus of the, of the Chinese uh, government. Yes. How does um, an environmental laws may like hinder that a little bit, or maybe a lot? I'm not sure. How does how does that affect uh, the environmental laws in China? Um, I think. In China, the environmental laws development uh, always involved. Uh, in or have the struggling situation, um, the relationship with our economic laws. I mean, economic development. Um, frankly speaking, our in our recent uh, 30 years, our environmental laws are really soft. The enforcement are really soft. Uh, the reason mainly because environmental, uh, I mean, economic development. All the governments they want to focus on the short-term development GDP and to improve their promotion, promotion and performance, political performance. So that's a really big question, and maybe the first question um, about China's environmental protection. So, but um, as what I said. You know, the common people, if they went to the street every day, the government cannot, you know, they cannot fire that. They cannot even, they have some big challenges from that. They cannot just stay there and pretend nothing happened. So that's why in recent five years, our environmental law really became uh, harder. Yeah. So. Thank you. 
that's very tricky problem in China. Yeah. So they must balance the balance the common people's angry and the development. I mean economic development. Um, I was wondering if you could, there's been some question about the exact meaning of the, uh, I think it was Article 58, maybe in the, in the new law that prohibits NGOs from seeking economic benefits from the litigation. Yes. Because um, I'm sure you're aware, in the US law, citizen suits, it only authorizes courts to issue penalties and injunctions, so there's not, it's not really necessary to have those provision like that. So I was wondering if you could clarify a little bit, like yes. exactly what that means. Yes, yes, that, that, that's, yeah, that's another reason. I, at first, I, I, I named this uh, hot topic uh, Tiger Paper because they gave the so, you know, they narrowed the standing at the first NGO and they give the more narrow uh, conditions like they practice five years or uh, beyond some uh, levels, uh, some administrative levels. And they uh, just uh, uh, yeah, regulate, you cannot benefit any money from public interest litigation. So we all know, even uh, when you know, this kind of case would spend a lot of money. So NUOs, if they read this article, they would not want to sue any public interest litigation. Um, but I mentioned the two interpretations from uh, the Supreme Court. They try to you know, cover a little bit the bad, the side uh, effect of that regulation, that article, that provision. Because they said you can, the lawyer can get the money from, you know, get, get the reasonable money from that. That means the, at least the lawyer can get the payment from the litigation. So they try to a little bit change that so harsh and unreasonable provision about, about Article 58, that part. Yeah, so I think they want to, you know, because from our Supreme Court, they established a professional court, I mean, environmental professional court. But all the courses, more than in China, we have, it's very interesting, we have almost more than, less than 400 environmental course, course already. But most of them have no case. Why? No plaintiff. So, and now they said you cannot benefit from that. So what could I do? So that's uh, the Supreme Court, even for their own interest, they literally want to change the Article 80. Uh, 58 about that part, but it's still not so optimistic. That's why I said I don't want to change the name of Tiger Paper. I want to see what the prosecutors want to do because sometimes they are really passive, uh, passive about the function. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah George Hamilton's in his hot topic last week talked about his organization is helping the factory managers in China. Uh, in compliance with the environment, are the NGOs in China getting any outside help to give them support or give them the heft they need to tackle and give them uh, just the right to bring an issue to the courts? Yes, I, I heard that uh, hot topic. Um, but they just do something as EHS, um, right? That, that, that program happened in China, some developing countries. Um, China's NGOs, that's one problem. China's NGOs, we don't have too many very capacity, uh, c capable NGOs. Some of them doing some other things, like help the international world do something to you know, improve the China's uh, enterprises, uh, improve their capacity, uh, or help the, some, uh, just to help the, 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 the students. Um, elementary students planting trees or reading their awareness about environmental protection. So they're all different functions. So think about litigation for Chinese NGOs. That's really not so easy for most of the NGOs. Whatever they are big or not, they are, uh, have money or don't, but most of uh, China's NGOs do not have enough money. <laughs> That's their basic facts. But what you mentioned that, uh, yeah, in that problem, issue, uh, many NGOs can help um, that, I remember that professor's uh, international program about the help the enterprises, but I mean, yeah, NGOs are too different. So that's what I said, even we have one qualified NGO in one province, 
you could not just uh, rely on them to bring the lawsuits. That's, that's too professional in China. Yeah. I have to end because the process starts at one. But thank you, Mr. Jack.